All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 9. All right, we're going to be using a JAS1 screwdriver, and we're going to be removing all the screws from the bottom. If you're wondering, this is a battery disconnect switch. So if you use like a small screwdriver or folded out paper clip, you can push that and it will act like a battery reset. Okay, sometimes if the computer's having issues turning on, that can actually help it. So yeah, give that a try if you're having that kind of issue. All right, anyways, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, once you got all these screws loosened, it looks like they all actually stay in the uh, cover. We're going to go from the back here and just pull it up. I don't know if you saw, I just got my fingernail in the little gap here and pulled up the cover and it just popped out. You can probably even just use a suction cup, stick it on and just pull it up and it will pop out just like that. So there we go. We got the bottom cover off. Came out really easy. I like that design. Okay, um, this computer is having issues booting. Most likely it did some kind of update or something and got screwed up. All right, I'm just going to show quickly inside. Uh, CPU uh, is soldered to the motherboard. There's no upgradable GPU or anything like that. Okay, there's an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD underneath here, which we are going to remove because I need to um, uh, copy data over and then uh, before I wipe it out. Um, there's this little case intrusion switch right there, so it will know that you open the cover. You got one speaker here with a wire going underneath to this speaker here, and then that connects up over here, all right? So it looks like this one is the speaker wire. There's another one going here, which I'm confused. There's too many wires here. Okay, so there's multiple. So this one goes to the big set, and then you got this other wire here going to this speaker, as well as the other so maybe there's more than three speakers because I see wires going underneath here okay this big one uses all of those and then I see some blue wires going around I see there's four speakers so two here and two down here okay so this one connects to the two big ones and then um, this cable over here connects to the two small ones over here all right Battery is right there. You can see the model information, L20M4P71. All right, there's also these ASM part numbers and FRU part numbers, all right? So if you need those, they're there. You can take a look. All right, um, I'm not really gonna take out the battery, but it looks like this battery just has a slot where you kind of like push it down into place. It has like little um, kind of fins that stick out like this, and then they just slot down. So to pull it out, you just pull it back up this way. So I would take all the screws out and then just pop that out. Since we're just doing the SSD, I'm not going to worry about that. Of course, if you're messing with this stuff, make sure you're grounded. Make sure that the computer's off, that you're not going to mess anything up. All right. What else? You got the LCD LVDS connector here. I'm not going to mess with that. Um, it looks a little strange. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure how this one comes out, but uh, I'll have to... I'm going to leave it there because they don't have an issue with the screen and I don't want to risk damaging anything. Um, I actually have a customer here right now, so I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. Let's clean this thing up because the fans are a little bit dusty. Okay. All right, there's also the BIOS CMOS RTC real-time clock battery here, connector. All right, this one you grab the wings and you kind of just wiggle to pull it out. I don't want to pull that out. So then the BIOS will reset. Wireless card is soldered to the motherboard. There's this cable here. I'm not sure what that's for. All right, there's two of these cables. This one looks like you would the one that you would kind of like pry up and pop out. But again, I don't want to mess with that. I'm assuming both of them are like that, that you would just pry it up. But uh, if you can find another video showing how to remove that, look for that because, yeah, I don't want to mess with it. It's a customer's computer. I don't want to risk damaging something else. Then they have this slot here. I'm not sure what it's for. I think it's like a um, wide area network card for like those mobile broadband things, kind of like using the cell phone uh, SIM card stuff. Let me see what, there's all this like cat hairs and stuff in it. Well, 
All right. So I'm not going to mess around with it anymore. I don't know what this... There's another connector here for a two-pin thing. I don't know what that's for. You can see the battery reset button there. They have holes here for, like, antenna wires, I think. Um, then you got this cable here going underneath. Most likely for the trackpad, keyboard, stuff like that. Um, I don't see anything else. <clears throat> Yeah, sorry I'm not really going over too much in here. RAM is soldered to the motherboard, so you can't upgrade that. Let's go ahead now and remove the SSD. One screw there, and one screw here. Make sure you push down while you're undoing these screws. You don't want the screwdriver to skip and strip the screws. Okay, let's see. This plate should just lift off. Okay, I guess we're going to slide the whole plate with it. So lift this. And then we should be able to wiggle and slide that. Oh, <laughs> there you go. It came off. So we'll set that aside. Lift this slightly. Grab the edges. And then we're just going to wiggle and pull this out. So there's the M.2 PCIe NVMe, PCIe NVMe SSD. And um, they do put a thermal pad on the bottom as well. I don't know why, but all the computers where I see they put thermal pads, I feel the SSDs die quicker. So I don't know what's going on with that. Um... But yeah, anyways, I have this little thing to read the SSD, so I'm going to put the SSD here, and then I'm going to just um, migrate, oops, migrate all the data over. So we'll migrate the data all over to another drive, okay? And then <clears throat> after we do that, we can put the SSD back in, wipe it out, and we should be good to go. All right, this thing's being kind of a pain to get in. All right, there's all different kinds of these M.2 adapters. Make sure you get the right one because some will only work with M.2 SATA SSDs. Some will work with only M.2 PCIe NVMe SSDs. And some will actually work with both. This adapter I have works with both. Um, it's not in an, enclosure, in an enclosure, so I do have to be careful that I don't damage any of these things. Um, but yeah. All right, I'm going to clone the data over. And then I'll be back to show you more of the inside, um, unless you don't care, because I'm just going to be putting it back together, put the SSD back, put the cover back on. Um, but yeah, oh, if I didn't already show, wireless card there, usually to remove that, you go from the tail and pull up. Um, again, there's this cable. I'm assuming maybe this is for the keyboard backlight, but I do see this little thing up there. Actually, that might not be. I think that might be the power button. So there's the power button with the light there. So that's probably for the power button board, this cable here. All right. And yeah, that's pretty much it for now. All right, let me go clone the drive over and then I'll be back. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm back. Sorry about that. Let's see here. So we got the SSD now copied to an external drive. That way, if any data is missing, we will be able to pull that out and Put it onto the computer once we reinstall windows anyways we'll take the drive out of this adapter we'll put it back in here okay it goes at an angle and then you push it in okay should slide in quite far okay and then it kind of locks in place there because this thing right ra the raised part goes into that little groove sorry it zoomed out so much well let me see there you go then we'll get this piece and just drop that back into place. All right, very simple, straightforward. Get the screws back in. I'm going to loosely fit the screw first to make sure everything is lined up. And then we'll tighten that down. Okay, just like that. And just like this. There we go. Oops, let me... All right, so there we go. We got the SSD back in. I also didn't mention there's the fans here. Two fans, but it has one connector here. So if you do need to replace it, keep that in mind. It looks like to remove this, there are tiny screws. Um, you'd have to take the heat sink out or the whole motherboard to lift this up and then get underneath to um, flip the fans out from this metal piece that's part of the heat sink. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We're going to put this thing back together and then 
and then we're going to install Windows 11 on it. All right, so I'll show you how to do that. All right, let's go ahead and put the cover back on. It goes on at an angle like that. Then you drop this down. This all kind of clicks into place and we just put these back. I like to twist it backwards first, feel it click, and then tighten the screw in. That way I can make sure that these screw threads are going in properly, okay? And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and boot the Windows 11 USB installer. So let's go ahead and flip this thing back over. Yep. Junk all over it. Okay. Get this USB C charger plug to plug it in. Make sure it doesn't die midway. Okay. Open this up. Get the Windows 11 USB. We'll put that. And the way you boot from this, uh, from external USB devices, um, you start up the computer and then you press F12. Or you can press F10 and it will tell you the different options. Um, I'm going to press F12 because I know that's the boot menu. Here you can see boot menu and then you can see my Sandus Cruiser fit. So we're going to click on that. And it should boot straight to this USB. I am going to have to do a custom install, delete all the partitions, and then do a clean install. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. If you're trying to boot a non-EFI bootable device, you do have to disable secure boot before you can do that. Speaking of which, I probably should turn secure boot back on. But um, yeah, I don't know why Windows 11 boot USBs take forever to start up. You can see the screen's just staying black. And then eventually it should start up, right? Yeah, the power button. Oops, sorry. The power button is lit up. And here you can see it took forever. <laughs> but there you go. And it's starting up. Okay, it said I started an upgrade. No, I didn't. So yes, because I want to start a clean installation. So I press enter. And we're just going to keep waiting. I don't know why. Again, I don't know why Windows 11 takes forever. Oops, let me actually do this. Okay, I don't know why it didn't want to do the install. It thought I was doing a weird upgrade. But I wasn't. Um, so what I'm going to probably have to do is restart the computer. And I'm going to press enter this time. I'm pretty sure it's F1. But for some reason it didn't take it. So I'm pressing enter on boot. Okay, then they give you this menu, and here you can see F1 is BIOS setup. Yeah, so I don't know why it didn't work earlier, but F1. Then we can go to security. Oh, it's not touch screen. I keep thinking it is for some reason. Security, secure boot, and we're going to turn that back on. <clears throat> F10 to save and exit. Yes. Okay, and F12 again. I don't know why it's not booting the Windows 11 USB, but uh, it's kind of weird. Come on. Come on. Wake up. Come on. Wait, there we go. Took forever. Okay. Now we'll boot the SanDisk again. And we'll just give it some time. I don't know why it's doing it as an upgrade. I hope it's not going to do that again, but let's see. Okay, we'll wait for that. Come on, wake up. Do your thing. Jeez, this thing takes forever. I should actually start another computer cloning process while I'm waiting for that, because this is taking forever. And It looks like you started an upgrade and booted from installation media. If you want to continue with upgrade, remove the media from your PC and click yes. If you want to, oh, oops, I was supposed to click no. Okay, if I want to do a clean install. All right, so we're going to go to next here, install. <clears throat> and you can see the installation is going, obviously. Um, but yeah, I... I have a feeling that this computer, maybe it was in the middle of doing a Windows update, like a big one, 
and something happened and it just failed. All right, I'm gonna press the space bar to accept, enter, custom install, and then I'm just gonna make sure to delete all these partitions. There we go, so all unallocated space, and then we'll just go next. And Windows is gonna install. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, make sure you get all the drivers, check device manager, make sure everything is good. And yeah, see you all in the next one. Bye, let's drop this.